Is it going? Okay. So hopefully this will work. So now this feminism thing, it's funny, it's gone on, and I've had some comments uh, back and forth with Quintica. Now the thing is, um, first of all, uh, you know, Quintica and, and others too, you know, go on and on about, okay, there's these, uh, there's no studies that there's any link between something and video games. Okay, now they're quoting recent links saying that, you know, it's not correlated with crime statistics. If it has an effect, it's not above the noise. Um, fine, I, I never cl claimed otherwise. I said that it primed people for aggressive behavior and aggressive ways of thinking. But here's the deal, what you really don't get is that just because I might say that a violent game is violent or gratuitously violent or it didn't need to be that way or it reflects attitudes of society, I don't actually believe the solution is to get rid of video games or any kind of art at all. I think what is necessary is for us to have other kinds of archetypes in the medium, you know, other, you know, and better things. You know, I think right now, basically, it's like in the early stage of television where all there was on there was, uh, you know, wrestling and stuff. It's like the, we could do more, and more has been done, but, you know, we're also talking about what can take hold in the mainstream. And how this affects people's brains is that you are limited to the metaphors you are familiar with. And it's certainly not video games' fault that people don't have more metaphors, but it is something that's reflected in medium, uh, in media, and uh, in entertainment, art of all kind, interactive or otherwise. And uh, so, for example, we do have the problems of, you know, we want to fight poverty. Oh, well, it's a war on poverty, you know. It's, it's ridiculous. War on drugs, war on the rest of these. You know, how do you fight poverty? You destroy poverty? No, you don't attack poverty. You create wealth. You create wealth as how because it's not really a war. You know, not every conflict is, is a war. Even a life and death conflict like between a gazelle and a lion, that's not a war. War is an institutionalized thing having to do with our social structures, specifically our nations or other governmental structures. War is a thing. Now, you could try to find a more abstract definition of war. Uh, some people have said chimpanzees behave sometimes in, in a warlike way, just in an arbitrary, killing not for food. Um, but of course animals will do this for territorial reasons. So is war related to that? Yeah, but it's also a different kind of a thing. I think when I say war, you know I'm talking about things like the Iraq War. Right, okay, and this is the source of where uh, slavery came from. Really, all the models of uh, martial societies and oppressive uh, regimes come from this model and history of war. So, you know, we ought to have other metaphors, and the solution is to be exposed to those metaphors. And the way we could do that is by promote a medium uh, as more than what it currently is. And, uh, you know, Quintica was saying one thing, he's like, well, so what? Yeah, so, okay, we admit, yeah, there's the damsel in the distress trope in Donkey Kong. Who cares? Who's that hurt? Well, you know how the MGTOW and the MRAs complain about women taking advantage of them, or there's this guy, Happy Cabby, he's an old uh, YouTuber I happen to still subscribe to, and, you know, he's had a couple stories like this one just recently, you know, he's some girl, and then ends up wanting her phone bill paid and then she disappears and then of course she comes back with an excuse and wanting to make up until another bill needs to be paid kind of thing and uh, how he gets taken advantage of now I think uh, you know they probably blow this out of proportion to a certain degree in the sense that we all have our own responsibilities and whatnot but it is a thing and how do guys fall into that and get taken advantage of well this damsel in distress is a big way they think they're helping the damsel in distress, and part of that is that she's going to be thankful, and she gets the kiss at the end of the game, or the fairy tale, or, you know, like Anita showed, getting a little more, you know, getting busy more than that. And uh, this expectation, this false expectation, which has no realistic, this is not how the world works, it's not how gratitude works, it's uh, a lot, most people sooner or later figure this out one way or another, so doesn't that raise the question of where does it come from then if it's not the way things are? 
uh, well, it's these fairy tales that y'all have in your mind, and you need to expand and have some other stories and some better stories. And so, uh, if if there's a lot of these uh, just cliche, trite, not really very realistic ways mo of modeling narratives um, in games, and a lack of, you know, uh, better ones that can expand you, then it's, it's a good place to go and try to do some art criticism. And I mean, take films, sure, we still have a bulk of Hollywood films that are kind of crap, but even Hollywood's made some very good films, and in the past it's had some eras where it did really pretty good, and maybe never the bulk of them are the mainstream, but it's had a breadth, you know, it's filled out a bell curve at least, where, you know, there are thought-provoking um, pieces of art that help you think in an expanded way, give you new metaphors to understand how the roles and relationships uh, of actors, so-called philosophically speaking, in the world interoperate. So, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, this trope, this China trope of a damsel in distress, it hurts men, actually, quite a bit. And uh, that's the whole point, is that this idea of patriarchy, well, it's a feminist take on, really, they're talking about a traditionalism. You know, and, and there's great things from our traditions. There's the Greek myths and you know, music and foods and stuff. But really, as an overall system, traditionalism's been fucked up all around the world even in societies that don't even seem to have had that much contact at certain points of history, still had this sort of fucked up, you know, just like overly purist, overly ridiculously, you know, picky uh, superstitions have grown and things like this, just uh, worldwide. And uh, so traditionalism's on trial here, and these these roles of, of in in tradition that have damsel in distress and and the, you know working class hero or the the ruling class hero or um, you know that you're the peasant or the slave or the servant and this is your lord and your master and it's like your father and blah 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 it's just like you know screw all that stuff and even if it ever worked in some time. We've lost connection. I've lost connection. That uh, these traditions, no value of these traditions, uh, benefited, came on to me. If you know, worshiping your parent was worthwhile in some era where they helped make sure you had an inheritance or were set up, that that doesn't happen anymore. So it just even if it was a good idea, then it's not working now. And so uh, you know, when feminists are pointing at the patriarchy, yeah, it 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 uh, puts this man in a gilded kind of a armor, but is it really a good situation? No, you got to compete with all the other boys to be the best jock and blah, blah, blah. It's all a bunch of bullshit. So uh, these tropes, like the, the damsel in distress trope, this is how men fall into their googly-eyed, uh, you know, when they're, when, you're, when your guy friend is uh, falling for some woman, you see he's just, she's just taking advantage of him. It's these kinds of illusions that make that possible because it affects your psychology. Now, granted, if you have another idea, you could go ahead and play these games, you could do whatever you want, and you could see these silly fairy tale tropes for what they are, and even enjoy them uh, in whatever way they, they could be enjoyed, because you have another uh, a method. Now, am I saying people don't have this other method? How do I know that? Isn't that awfully uh, you know, forward of me? Well, here's why. Because it's war on poverty. Because it's going to war in Iraq when some other people attack our country. It's irrationally aggressive. So, yeah, I would say the imaginary aggression is going to be related to that. Now, is it causal? No, it's a symptom. But let me tell you, uh, doctors have reason to care about symptoms. And, and the symptoms lead to the solutions. So, anyway, hopefully you could hear that as it was intended and that this thing recorded this time.